Uh, hello guys and girls, this is your friend in neighbourhood Weep, the Eisenberg here. And it is a little bit strange that I'm putting the intro right in the middle of the video. I just thought I would. <laughs> um, right, so, what are we doing here then? It is... The footage that I filmed today. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason why I'm trying to catch this uh, Nidoran male because it's one of my favourite monsters from uh, Generation 1. I'll do a lot of this by the way, constantly looking at my my, bat, my, my boxes in Pokemon Go because I'm almost at capacity. capacity. Uh, yeah, that was my art block, by the way. I so I think here what's happening is I'm just kind of film for time. Yep, and Yaselda has joined me for a battle. Now what this was, was I was helping Yaselda out with a research task thing. The one where you had to battle a friend and win to get something. I mean, they did say to me that what it was. Uh, and all we really talked about was a uh, overhaul from series four of My Hero Academia that's on now on Crunchyroll. Yeah, Crunchyroll. And I'm not going to go into what we said about overhaul because. Uh, Spoil heavy, and I'll just leave it at that. So, continuing on to the nail, I what I had to do is I had to basically help him out by giving him a challenge, but not much, too much of a challenge that he couldn't beat me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not nice of a friend though, you know, because I mean, I was willing to help him out with the research task that he had because uh, obviously I said, I said to him as well about the these research tasks that I'm doing now it's the, the ghost one for 2019 and he didn't actually know about the the one for this year because he's not completed the old one it's really really hard to do up here in Scotland when there's no very many people about to actually help you out with the research tasks because granted there is a lot of poker stops in the next town up the road from me where I am now but like I say I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of folk up there in that town he well, work on Pokemon Go at the exact same time that you are. Because all it is up there is they're filling up gyms eh, with Pokemon and eh, getting them in the Pokestops and everything. I know, I mean, when you do, I mean, when you see eh, some people at the the gyms and that and the raids and that normally it's when you can't get to it yourself um and by the time you get down there yourself no one's around so it's probably the poker stops that are near houses in my area um which is just down the road from there and up in the town that my mate's in. 
I, uh, up there they've got a lot of Pokestops near like places you can get to. Like the library, uh, some of the shops. I'm pretty sure there's a couple of Pokestops near houses. So technically all the person needs to do is walk to the front door but not leave their house and they'll be able to kind of get the gym. Yeah. I remember I did live in a bit a couple of years ago that there was a poker stop right outside the my bedroom window. Now obviously that was back uh, when obviously your boy here was homeless. Yeah. You might not actually believe it, but yeah. I was homeless for quite a while. Um, nice folk though. Probably just the fact that I just kept myself to myself, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But yeah, I eventually found the place I'm in now and I'm grateful where I am because it's really, really quiet. Really quiet. I mean, I'm not exaggerating, but you can literally hear the, the birds and the animals in this town because it's in the country. Yeah, sort of in the country, if you will. And it's nice just to like relax at like 10 o'clock at night, you know, and kind of watch some YouTube and like make some videos for your channel, you know. Well, um, yeah. Okay, so I've not been keeping track of what's been happening in this video. Um, I'm taking it this is the po yeah, this is the point where I go to Yasilda's profile because I think we're setting up a trade. I'm not sure. I think because I keep clicking on the wrong thing. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. This is, I don't actually have that research task to do, but I thought, well, I might as well just kind of try and reenact re the battle and style that they have in the anime. Although my friend did tell me it's not going to work like that in Pokemon Go, and I'm just like, well, I know that, but I just want to see if I can try and do it, you know. So basically what I did is, um, we both kind of pressed, well I say we both did, my friend let me kind of attempt, attempt it because he was working in his moped. Uh, and I was basically, as you can see, what I was trying to do is get them, this Garados and my Dragonite, Power thing them in enough to kind of attack each other with a dragon type attack so they'd knock each other out. But as you can see, it didn't quite work out that way. A For the life of me, I don't know why I sent out an Aragon against a. Oh, that's why I did. Okay. Because I think Heavy Slam actually wins it for me on this, with this Pokemon. I'm not sure. Yeah, it does.
Yeah, as you can see, try as I might, I cannot quite emulate the fighting style that they do in the anime. Because you have to pause and obviously charge up your attacks now. Which is a pain, uh, to be honest. But then again, I suppose this is to make a different from other Pokemon games, so that it kind of stands out in the crowd. Does my Aragon win this? I can't, I don't remember. Should find out soon. Yeah, there we go. I think that my Aragorn loses this round, I'm not sure. Yeah, in comes the legend, Mel Metal. And for standard fights with my friend here, uh, my Mel Metal is a little bit strong. Um, yeah, but like I said, I've noticed that Mel Metal has not got a proper place in the Pokedex and Pokemon Go because it's not said where it's from. I mean, we knew we know in the anime that Meltan appeared in Alola, hence it being the seventh generation that it appeared in. But rumour has it that come November 15th, when Pokemon Sword and Shield is out, Mel Metal is going to be in the, the games. So, unless the Pokemon Company says where Mel Metal is from, I'm thinking he's actually from Kanto. But I'm, orig I'm originally thinking he's from. Galar because it kind of fits the aesthetics of the Galar region but then again we will know once the games come out next month um, and yeah I am doing a video on it a just kind of a couple of episodes um, I'll try and pack as much as I can into the one episode so that it's enough for you guys to see my playthrough. I'll be playing as a female character by the way. Um, Jess, Jessie or Jessica from the Eisenberg family. Oh, and well, obviously because it's my, the lore that I've got going on through all these, all these games, you know. Hey, we have a lucky trade here. And I can remember I made a comment where I like the layout of the Lucky Trade. Because what we do is my friend helps me out with a Halloween Pikachu. And you'll see it in a minute once we get it all sorted up. Sorted out, sorry. Right, so that's you still the connected, and I try to figure out what I need to trade on. So I'm trading them a shuckle that I nicknamed Polnareff, or Polnareff. Now that's a reference to Part Five, Jojo, when spoilers, when Polnareff turns into a turtle, hence the shuckle having the nickname Polnareff. Or porn, porn the ref. Um, yeah, and this is where it helps me out with a Halloween Pikachu on the Lucky Trade. So he's ended up with a. Oh, a minute. Here we go. A Lucky Trade. Halloween Pikachu. There we go. Nice and shiny. 
Uh, he's trying to raise this fee bastard and uh, my low tick, which is a pain in the pain in the behind, to be honest to do. Because I've got enough, and he's got enough probably like candies to get the next to get this evolution. Fifteen percent left. It really drains battery doing these trades, and this is my other JoJo Pokemon that I decided to trade him. A machoke called Aura Aura. Or 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 Um yeah, so I don't know if this is no, this is not gonna be a lucky trade. Because the black guy I'll rephrase that. The background is blue. In future videos, uh, you know the thing you see on the side of the screen, in the bottom right hand corner? Yeah, it says Cyberlink Power Director, and the thing on the actual video in the centre saying do you, do, you, do you recorder, eventually I'm going to get those watermarks taken off. Um, and yeah, I don't actually have a Munch Lux until now, so I'm grateful that he allowed me to have one of his ones that I didn't want. I don't actually know what's going to happen in the next part of the video because I'm looking at the timeline here and it's obviously showing me something completely different. Like a battle with Team, team Go Rocket. But actually on the screen it's a uh, Uh, more steps towards completing the ghost task for this year, I think, by me catching a shop it. But then I realised that doing that has effectively filled my bag up to capacity 600 over 600. And I know some means that they're all say, you just kind of max your bag it to the complete maximum. But the thing is, I'm not going to spend any money on this game. So I have to kind of wait until I get enough money, coins if you will, from the gyms. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a little bit when the shop in here obviously. Uh, yeah, um, also I think this is where I make a little instruct uh, instructive part. Teach, uh, teach you guys something. I think it's coming up soon. Yeah, because I won't catch, try and catch that uh, shell off. I think because I click on it, I'm not sure. Yep. I can't because my storage is full. And it tells me to update it, but I can't. Because I've not got enough coins. I don't actually realise why my... My Pokemon boxes and Pokemon Go are actually all weird at the minute. Eh, uh, was because I got it on the wrong canal. Um, you'll see in a minute when I pull the side menu up. Something I've also noticed with the research tasks that they give you in Pokemon Go. They give you some unrealistic goals to get when you don't take into consideration that my friend had caught a Aerodactyl for that research task and yet it didn't count. So I mean what in the blue hell was going on there? He technically did what the research task told him to do, and it didn't recognise that he did it. And it's like, oh. I mean, I would have traded on one of my Aerodactyls, but it wasn't going to work because it actually had to be caught from his end. Eh... Uh, I think that's everything. Um, I 
I'll just kind of stop right in the now and I'll pick up a wee bit. So yeah, this is where I pick up again and this is what you need to call your EV if you want a Leafeon or a Glaceon. And again, you guys watching this, pro, guys and girls watching this, pro, I'll rephrase that. Whoever's watching this video the now, you probably know how to get these two Pokemon. But just in case, and there's some people out there watching this video that don't know how to do it, this is what you do. So, you find an EV you want to evolve into either Leafeon or Glaceon. I decide to do which one here, I can't actually remember. I am going for... Okay, so you type this in, that I typed in there. Click on Evolve. And what you get by calling your EV that and clicking Evolve is... Okay. Do, 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 do. This works like the naming trick they did for Jolteon. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Straight into a Glaceon. Um, obviously naming it the... Naming it Re. R-E-A. It has to be a capital, capital R. Otherwise it won't pick it up. Then again it might. I don't know. And obviously I just thought I'd treat my new Glacier on to a third attack. Just give it a little bit more coverage when I'm fighting grass types and raids and that, you know. So that is the video.